our readings are all about Christ. Yet they throw the spotlight on Mary. Most wonderful way. Because today is a very special day. Beginning of a new year. Year 2023. 2023 watts. You ever ask yourself, 2023 what? Years of the reign of our Lord. Years of His glorious kingship. You know, in the ancient world, uh, the best way to tell time was you didn't have any central reference point for time. Telling time. All of the cultures and all of the different societies would always tell time based on the year of the reign of their king. It was in the 42nd year of the reign of Caesar, Caesar Augustus that Jesus Christ was born. That became a reference point to other things that took place during the years of the reign of Caesar Augustus. As since understood and come to understand that that's entirely backwards, it's not that Jesus Christ was born during the reign of Caesar Augustus. It's that Caesar Augustus became emperor 42 years before Jesus Christ was born and died 14 years after Jesus Christ was born. The incarnation and the birth of our Lord in time is a historic moment of all historic moments. It is the date that sets all dates before and after. And so when we say something happened 450 years before Christ, B.C., we're giving a date in reference to Christ. When we say something happened 42 billion years B.C., we're talking in reverence to Christ. And when we say today begins the year 2023, we're saying it starts the 200, uh, the 2023rd year of his glorious reign, our King. I think that that, enough, that in itself is reason to celebrate. That in itself is reason to that's not what makes today so special. Just that today is New Year's Day. It's that today is the feast of Mary, the mother, the holy Christ of God. He was mother of God. And so our readings, even though they're all about him, the shepherds come in haste to Bethlehem to find Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in a manger. It's all about the infant. We're told the message that the angels had brought to the shepherds is now being told by the shepherds to Mary and Joseph about the child. It's all about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what were told them by the shepherds. And Mary keeps these things and she reflects upon them in her heart. It's what she does at that point. And we're told twice in the gospel this same thing. The two times in the gospel that it tells us Mary kept this in her, and she reflected upon it, pondered it in her heart. I know many mothers who will, who will say, well, that had to have come after this because that happened when I was carrying so-and-so, and this happened when I was carrying so-and-so. You're a mother, you know that especially dates of things that took place at a time when you were pregnant are very crystal clear in your memory. They took place in those times. Why? Because it's such a life event in the life of a woman to have a baby. Especially if it's her first baby and her only baby. And our readings throw our attention to Our Lady. St. Luke isn't even trying to hide it. He says at the end of this passage when he 
recounts what happens on the eighth day. Today's the eighth day. When eight days were completed. And that means it's the day of Christ's circumcision and the day that circumcision pre prefigures baptism. It's the day that the child was received into the family of God, into the people of God, and received his name. It's a pretty significant day in the life of our Lord. The day he received his name. If you read through the beginning of our gospel, the shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and Jesus. It doesn't say that. It says, and the infant lying in the manger. Why not say Jesus? Because it wasn't his name yet. They made known the message that had been told them about this child. He didn't have a name yet. The child received his name on his circumcision day. Especially uh, if it was a firstborn son. It was the practice in the Jewish, among the Jewish people on the eighth day that the child received his name. And then St. Luke adds this very, very subtle, but very, very deliberate phrase. He says, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. We might say, if we didn't have that word before, if it said instead, when he was conceived, we might think he was referring to the angel that came to Joseph and said, you will name him Jesus. And since it's Joseph who names him Jesus on his circumcision day, that would make sense. It would kind of fit. If what St. Luke is describing, if he says, and he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel to Joseph. Fitting. But that's not what Luke says. He says, the name given him by the angel before. He was conceived in the womb. It's referring specifically and only to the moment that the angel told Mary in the midst of the Annunciation, you will have a child, you will, be, you will conceive a child and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. Name him Jesus. If we think about those words from the perspective of Mary, we'll discover that this is the final piece in a list of promises. For nine months, she experienced the fact that the first promise of the angel was made true to her. That because she said yes to God, she conceived in her womb. And for nine months, she, she discovers the life in her womb more and more. Even before she's really showing that she's pregnant, even before Joseph knows, he is aware of the first promise of the angel to her, she who believed in the word of God through his angel that she would conceive in her womb and bear a son. On Christmas Day, she, bears, she brings forth a son. If she had had a girl, it would have disproved the words of the angel. But there were no ultrasounds. So she didn't know, except by faith, that she had a son in her womb until the day he was born. So, she would conceive in her womb and bear a son. And you see, there's yet one piece missing. There's yet one part of the promise missing that has yet to be fulfilled. And that is fulfilled when Joseph, on the day of our Lord's circumcision, gives him his name. If you were Mary you would be hearing with such delight the name you heard from the lips of the angel and the complete promise being fulfilled. And so you see, it is fitting. It's not just a matter of the church saying, 
but we need some day to celebrate Mary, and it's fitting to do it a week after Christmas. It's the eighth day today. And today is the day, not only that our Lord received His blessed name, but that Mary heard it for the second time and was filled with absolute joy in her motherhood, not only of a child, a human child, but her motherhood of God. Because she couldn't see with her eyes any more than you and I could see in the bread on the altar when it is consecrated. She could not see that this baby was God. She had to believe that on faith. And this last piece of the promise given to her intensifies and completes the angelic message and the trustworthiness of the account that she will hold in her heart, she will meditate in her heart as she watches him grow up, as she watches him going from being a lap child to a toddler, from a toddler to a six-year-old chasing lizards, from a six-year-old to a 12-year-old who decides to give his mom and dad the slip in Jerusalem because he knows what his father's will is in that moment, and it's for him to confront the intellectual and the brilliant minds at the temple at 12. And Our Lady watching all the way up until the wedding feast at Cana never had, until that moment, never had a sign, a miracle to attest to the fact that her child was, in fact, the Son of God. All she knew was the miraculous nature of his being given to her and the word of the angel, and she believed it in faith. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we rejoice with Mary. We rejoice with her in seeing the words of the angel fulfilled and seeing that on the eighth day, our Lord is given his blessed name. And what a joyful name. What a glorious name. It is Savior. It's that he is our Savior, that he is the Son of God, that he is the one who has come to fulfill all promises. And in receiving his name, the promises of the angel meet their fulfillment as well. So, happy Sunday. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, because it's still Christmas. It's only the octave day. And happy feast of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, the mother of God.